Today we have with us something that GM did not mess up on. But in all seriousness, this is my dad's 2018 Chevrolet Impala. And to be honest, GM should have never stopped making this car. They exhausted the previous generation Impala running from 2006 until 2013. And that previous generation even ran until like 2016, I believe with production for fleet and police vehicles. And they redesigned the Impala in 2014 for consumers and uh, just people going to dealerships to buy these. So in 2014, when you went to buy an Impala, this is what you would get. And GM did an outstanding job with designing this car. This is still, here it is, this body style is uh, going in its sixth year now, in which this is a 2018 model. And it still looks fantastic. And just a little bit of a story behind this car. This is my dad's car, and he bought it about two years ago, almost two years ago, this August. So a few months from now, it'll be two years. So I guess it's safe to say that this is a two year owner review, even though it's not my car. And uh, the car has around 20 to 21,000 miles on it. It has sat every night of its life since my dad bought it in the garage. And my dad just really babies it and takes care of it change the oil on time, uh, rotates the tires when need be, and he hasn't seen any major issues or really quality flaws in the car in the almost two years and a touch over 20,000 miles that he's had it. And to be honest, I really love this car myself. Whenever my dad lets me take it for a day or asks me to change the oil in it for him, I love getting to drive because it drives like a dream. It just shifts and accelerates flawlessly. GM finally made a car with this car that was praised among consumer reports which yes there are others that have been praised by car reviewing companies but this car is in a class that's not just full size it can compete with other luxury full size sedans and I want to get in this video and show you guys why my dad bought this car why he doesn't plan to get rid of it anytime soon, and also why GM should have never stopped making this car. So starting on the outside, it has a velvet blue exterior, and it really just has a pretty color. The car was just washed, uh, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, and uh, still looks really clean. And uh, as far as the body goes, there's no imperfections or flaws on the body. It does still have remote keyless entry, has the switchblade key and it does have push button ignition. So both the original key fobs still work as they should. And it does have remote start. My dad rarely uses that, so he hasn't had any issues with that. The only time the remote start really gets used is if I'm driving or using the car, which is not that much. Now looking at the face of the car, this really is still looking like a new car just the styling of it. GM did an outstanding job with the styling of the car. It has the fog lights down low, the chrome grille. So this one is riding on the Firestone and these are Firestone GT uh, Firehawks and they are 235 50 R18s. All the wheels are still in great shape and that wheel is uh, not the base wheel, but it's not the premium like 19s that you'd see on the, the Premier or the 20 inch rims that you'd see on the Premier, but still nonetheless, a nice looking wheel on the car. My dad is a super picky person when it comes to vehicles. I spent so much time trying to help him find a vehicle that he liked and a vehicle that he felt was comfortable and just fit him. And the moment that he got behind the wheel of this and started driving it, it's the first time that he ever drove a V6 Impala. He drove the four cylinder, didn't care much for it. And I told him, well, get behind the wheel of a V6. As soon as he did, the handling, the acceleration, everything, he knew within just a couple minutes of driving it that this was the car he wanted to buy. And sure enough, he ended up buying it. So it does have the keyless entry. All you have to do is have the key fob in your pocket and uh, just step up, push the button, and the keyless entry buttons are on all four of the doors. And stepping inside, this is one of the key things, along with being a six cylinder, the color, my dad loves blue for his uh, exterior colors, is the light wheat leather interior. And this is a beautiful interior. It's not that common at all, but we really do love it. I personally love it, he loves it. 
Those brown mats go nicely with the lightweight interior. The front does have dual power seats, power windows, locks, and mirrors. It does have the Bose Premium Audio. So this car is really loaded up with a lot of options. You got the leather, you got the power seats. It does have navigation. We'll go ahead and step inside. Stepping inside this car is really just very upscale. It's almost like a luxury vehicle. And uh, the inside is actually holding up quite well as far as wear and tear goes. Um, premature wearing like buttons, anything like that. Nothing has really gone wrong or broken or messed up on the car. And right now you'll see the odometer sitting at 20,879 miles. And other than oil changes, we haven't even had to take it to the dealership for any uh, anything out of the ordinary. It's been really reliable so far. It does have heated steering wheel and of course the Impala styled wheel. And first impressions of the wheel, mixed thoughts. I mean, the wheel kind of looks, I've, I've heard people say it looks a little bit ugly. I personally think that it's a nice steering wheel. It's leather wrapped with stitching, has nice grip. Um, my dad has never complained about it. One thing that I do know he has mentioned, and I've noticed this also, is you really have to push the horn like hard. You can't just, you have to like lay into it for it to actually beep. And it's not just this specific Impala. It's every Impala of this generation that I've been in has been like that. It does have cruise control. It does have voice command with Bluetooth. And of course the navigation system and that works pretty flawlessly um, entering uh, destinations and programming your places that you want to go into the GPS system it's not the fastest infotainment system that I've used but it's by no means the slowest like some manufacturers so nothing really to complain about there and the styling of the dash it has the door panels that just flow right into the dash and around like that it does have the dual zone automatic climate controls. That's something my dad really hasn't taken advantage of a whole lot. Um, him and my mom, when they're riding together, they don't really tend to disagree about the temperature. So that's not something that they really use a whole lot. And in the center here, you do have a uh, stitched shifter with a uh, pleather or a fake leather housing. And around that is a dark kind of blackish gray simulated wood grain, chrome surrounding the cup holders. Heat seat controls back here, a storage slot there, and traction control. And every time I've gotten in this car, one thing I have noticed is that sometimes I have to push this a few times, and that's only because my dad keeps some mints and stuff in here, and his change. Anytime I need quarters, I know where to go. I mean, this, this is always overflowing with quarters. You can see the only reason it didn't open right away is because of the change just literally overflowing there. Up here, he usually puts like receipts and stuff in here, and yeah, it looks like he's got some money in there right now. But that is something that he really likes, um, that feature, that hidden compartment there in the dashboard. That's a nice feature that not a lot of vehicles have. It does have OnStar, which he does not use. He doesn't use the My Chevrolet app or anything. I mean, I've told him, you know, you can control your... Um, locks your lights start the car from your phone he's just not into that so he doesn't really care much about it does have the garage door opener buttons there interior lighting and then a black headliner which kind of offsets the light interior nicely in my opinion i'm gonna go ahead and pop the hood on the way down you'll notice a storage compartment and it looks like he's got some just receipts and things in there for uh just whatever i don't know what it is but just different receipts and things parking brake over here does have the interior gauge cluster dimming controls and the trunk release pop the hood while we're down here it does have the white leather inserts in the doors as well matching the seats and it's just a great combination it really looks very upscale and very nice all the doors have a nice solid feel it really like i said feels more like a, uh, a higher class more luxurious car this seating position is in the position i would have it comfortable for me to drive i'm around five eight ish and uh, getting into the car he's got some detailers back here but uh with the seats all the way back you don't have quite as much leg room but looking at this leg room the true test of that seat being in my position i've got easily 10 inches of leg room and this back seat is just 
abnormally comfortable. The, the headroom, the shoulder room, everything is just perfect. Um, one thing that I've noticed just from driving the car, my dad hasn't said too much about this, the rear visibility can be a little bit, uh, it's got a little bit of blind spots there, and the back window is kind of, because it's slanted more, it's kind of a narrow exit for the rear window, so the rear visibility is not super great, but it's really nothing to complain about, it's just something to be aware of if you're going to buy one of these cars. It does have a flop down armrest in the center, which really I personally sitting in the back here I think I've seen this thing folded down like twice it just does not get folded down In the back it does have some chrome here above the ventilation ducts and then also a three-prong 120 volt power outlet, which again rarely has been used Looks like a little wrapper there pick that up And the trunk back here there are some groceries and things back here that's I mean this is it's not really messy it's just things that he gets grocery shopping or if my mom will take the car to the store just things that are left there I put the flag over just to cover it up so you guys don't have to see all the mess but looking at this trunk though while we're under here this thing is it's just absolutely crazy how spacious this trunk is and I'm gonna go ahead and fold these seats down these seats have a nice solid back so if you were to haul stuff it's not going to get smashed or dented and that's a really really great thing not to have to worry about and folding these seats down he has folded these seats down a few times and had to haul longer or bigger objects that would come up here and he's fit quite a bit of stuff in here when he needs to but that's not all the time that he does that go ahead and shut the trunk down now and not even mentioning it it is the LT package I didn't even go over that but LT package and you guys watching this video if you know about GM's packaging you'll know this car really does have a lot of options for an LT usually LTs are not this loaded and not this luxurious even over here though with this passenger seat all the way back you'll notice that I've still got probably two to three inches of leg room and uh, down there my foot room is good and the truth is if we had to go on a long trip with the seat all the way back I'd still be comfortable because the seating position is so nice the seats have a nice I mean they're they're firm but they have a comfortable feel at the same time and it's really just an awesome highway and road trip car and for the front passenger side Like I said, seat all the way back, and you can just tell this is absolutely insane. Look how much leg room this thing has. It's ridiculous. And, of course, we have the glove compartment here, and, yeah, it looks like he's got some stuff in here. Some receipts, and it looks like he's got his Glock in there. But, yeah, that's the glove compartment, center console. Got some more receipts and stuff in here, and... This is just stuff from everyday use. The car is always clean. It's never really dirty or cluttered, so to speak. There's just things that he keeps in here from just everyday use because it's his primary vehicle. So let's go ahead and pop this hood. And what really makes the car just an absolute joy and comfort to drive is the 3.6 liter variable valve timing direct injection V6. And all he's ever put in the vehicle is premium fuel. Not sure if that really is beneficial to it. Um, but that is all he's ever put in the car. And uh, I've filled it up a few times. Same with me. And it just, it's got a lot of power, a lot of punch. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that when we get on the highway. Take you guys for a short little drive. Before we go on the test drive, I've got an article from Consumer Reports directly. And I love Consumer Reports because they're very accurate with their, just their overall ratings as far as their reliability ratings, their criticism to cars. I found them to be very accurate. So whenever I buy a car, and whenever my dad buys a car, he goes by Consumer Reports. And just reading you a piece of this article here, 
2014 redesign dramatically transformed the Impala from a woefully uncompetitive and outdated model, which is definitely the previous generation, to a thoroughly modern and remarkably enjoyable car, which definitely fits the description. And I really just got a kick out of this next part. It is so accurate when you're driving this car. There are, and this is Consumer Reports talking again, there are a lot of high points here. The new Impala rides like a luxury sedan, which it definitely does, with a cushy, this is their word, with a cushy and controlled demeanor. So accurate. This car has a soft, plush, old person, Lincoln Continental, just like so comfortable feel, while at the same time, you can take corners like a sports car. It's absolutely insane. So, back to what I was saying, cushy and controlled demeanor while delivering surprisingly agile handling, capable acceleration, and excellent braking. We, we, don't, even, we don't even have to go on a test drive. Consumer Reports just put in my mind an image of an excellent driving car without even driving it. So the engine is paired to a six-speed automatic transmission. It does have the manual shift ability, which my dad has never used. I have never used either. The 3.6 liter does give the car 305 horsepower and 264 pound-feet of torque. We'll test the audio, and like I said, the audio system is just amazing in this car. We're going to go for a little bit of a test drive here, take you up the highway, and I just want to show you guys the acceleration because it really gets up to speed. If you were to floor this car from an absolute dead stop, a new V6 Impala, the wheel will just make sure you have a grip on it because it's going to pull and the front wheels being front wheel drive, they're gonna spin pretty excessively if the traction control is not on. So it's definitely got power, it's not lacking at all. The cabin inside here is very quiet, even once you get up to high speeds, it's just absolutely luxurious. Ooh, that's a nice classic. My dad has thought about trading this in and getting a newer vehicle. I mean, this has got 20,000 miles now, so he likes to keep his vehicles at low mileage now, likes to have something that's real comfortable and, and doesn't have to worry about the reliability. But this car is doing everything for him. It's comfortable. It is quiet on the inside, as you can hear, and uh, the road noise is very minimal. He just doesn't have a real need or desire to to get another vehicle because he hasn't been able to find anything that is quite as comfortable and just fits him quite like this does. Hard to come to a dead stop on the ramp, but looks like we were able to do it. Zero and launch. And 60, wow. 
and like I said guys you really have to make sure you're holding the wheel having the camera in one hand and the wheel in another hand I didn't even full throttle it right there because I just didn't want to do that on the highway going about 65 70 and once you are on the highway it's very quiet if you're to punch it on the highway it gains up speed really quickly now I'm going 75 77 miles an hour and didn't even really push it that much but it gets up to speed just effortlessly it really does now we're on a little bit of a back road setting here and I'm going around 30 35 nothing too crazy but it just takes these corners absolutely effortlessly no struggle at all it really feels while keeping me comfortable it feels like it is a sports car at the same time so there you go guys this is a review video of my dad's 2018 Chevrolet Impala showing you all the upsides of the car which could serve as a point as to why GM should just never stop making it why they really messed up in doing that and just showing you if you want a quality luxury sedan at a not so luxury price then this might be something to consider i mean an lt impala has a starting price of the late 20s this car right here with all the options and add-ons the sticker price of this was around 35 and change and plus you know rebates and stuff from gm you'll be getting a car at just an insane price compared to something like a lexus or a mercedes or bmw and a lot less maintenance just as comfortable really and performs nearly or if not just as well as those cars so i appreciate you guys watching be sure to comment let me know your thoughts on this video and on my dad's impala here and uh let me know your thoughts about gm discontinuing this car i think they made a big mistake there but uh hit that subscribe button before you go also see you guys next time